Well, good evening, viewers, or good morning, or whenever you're looking at this lovely little devotional video we have here. Uh, I'm Jake Green. Uh, most of you know me quite well. I'm one of the deacons of the church, and this week uh, I was asked if I could kind of provide a little bit of a devotional for Wednesday night. Uh, what was so funny about this devotional was that I kind of started looking at the topic we're going to discuss tonight several weeks ago, and come to find out Pat's discussion slash sermon that he had on Sunday is literally the chapter right before this. So uh, I hope if you have time, you can sit down and, and, and turn in your Bibles and, and join me as we look through 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 11. I'll give you a little time to turn to it as I have to turn myself to find it. Um, also, I decided I would give the best thing that I could possibly give as a camera angle, and that's not my face, but this uh, beautiful view of what I like to call downtown Williams. But uh, as we flip to 1 Corinthians, I'd like to say a quick prayer to get us started. And also, you have to forgive me, there's uh, two or three dogs running around here causing all sorts of racket. But as we, as we continue to turn, and I'm sure you're already there and I'm not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, thank you for this opportunity to come together and discuss your word. Lord, I, I appreciate everything that you've given to us. I appreciate this, this land that you've given us, this beautiful day that you gave to us. But also, I appreciate this time that we have together to really sit down as a, as a family and go through some meaningful and and helpful words, I believe, that we need to hear as a family, as a church body, and as individuals. Lord, help me to be brief but meaningful and concise but yet focused on you. And Lord, thank you so much for your son Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. All right, so uh, I'm, I'm still getting used to this uh, discussion through camera. So you'll have to just kind of bear with me. I've had to do several lessons over the summer of teaching kids, and it's just difficult to do without seeing people. But let's let's make sure that we're on 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we're going to read through verses 1 through 11. This is, once again, the letter of Paul, letter from Paul to the Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food. For you are not ready for it. And even now you are not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Paulus, are you not merely being human? When, it, when then is Apollos, and what then is Paul, servants through, from whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each? I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than what is laid, which is Jesus Christ. That's a, that's a very meaningful passage to me, considering that we just got done building our house, and one of the biggest and most important things, I believe, that goes into a house is indeed that foundation. So let's look right quick at some notes that I've jotted down and some things that I believe the Spirit led me to discuss with you all this evening. Uh, first off, you know, you call back to the tornadoes of 2011. I'll never forget those days. And you go to Wendell and Carroll's house and several of the houses that had got completely destroyed. The only thing left was indeed that foundation. And so the foundation is, is something that, that largely gets kind of overlooked when you look at a house. You don't ride by some big, nice, beautiful mansion and go, wow, that's a beautiful block foundation. Or wow, that's solid concrete. Instead, you look at the outside, you look at the, the windows, you look at the doors, you look at all the materials that, are, that go into making that house pretty. And so I would like to kind of flip that script a little bit, and let's look at ourselves. Lots of times we get really concerned with what we're doing, what we're posting on Facebook, what we're trying to, oh, i got to say something cool, or i got to do something that, that's really flamboyant and whatnot. And what you really should be doing, and especially in my case, as speaking to myself, I need to look to make sure my foundation is rooted in that of Christ. And so... How do you do that? You know, you can't really just look at a foundation and say, hey, look, that's at a level by two inches. 
Well, it shows up in cracks, and I think that uh, especially you'll see them in the walls or in the floor, the floor will be uneven, and it'll be something kind of just weird that shows up due to that messed up foundation. And so people that have a foundation built on the flesh exhibit qualities of the flesh, which are jealousy and strife. And so many times I find myself getting aggravated, especially at school. Good gracious, during this time right now, it's nothing but stress. Nothing but stress. And so I find myself getting very aggravated, and I have to really kind of remove myself from the equation and, and relax and really focus on, you know, why am I really here? You know, I understand i got to teach through this phone, but it's still, I'm, I'm after teaching. And so my foundation, as far as educational-wise, has got to be grounded in the love of teaching and and the love of being that positive role model for those children. Same thing for our Christian lives. If we're exhibiting qualities of flesh, we're getting angry a lot. We're getting jealous a lot. We're getting uh, uh, confused. We, we turn on the people that we love. That That's something that's not necessarily something wrong with the walls of your life or the flooring of your life. That's actually in the foundational aspects of your belief system. And, and me personally, like I said, I get aggravated a lot and I have to really go back and double check my foundation to make sure that I go back and get in that simple, the simple materials of, of Christian living that allow us to live the life that's focused on Jesus. Well, what is that? Well, Paul discusses it right there in uh, verse 2, said, I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you're not ready for it. You know, I think a lot of times we, we're eager to jump to the T-bone steak. You know, I've, I've, I've read the Bible, you know, Two pages, and I'm ready to start talking about the theology of Moses and the things discussed in Deuteronomy. You know, there's a time and place for that, but I think you've got to be a mature Christian to be able to sit down and really start digesting those things. And I think a lot of times, especially with me, as I said, all this is directed back towards me. I will like to dive into an insanely complicated subject and just find myself more confused and honestly getting no benefit out of it. And so we need to focus on what the main things and the plain things are. And that's, that's sharing that love of Christ and chasing after that that faith that we all need to have and running that race towards Christ. And it's it's something that you got to work on every day. It's something you got to go and look at. And so, you know, it's one of those things that you think, well, you know, if I do everything right, I, I'll be okay. Well, look at a garden, for example. I mean, let me turn the camera right here. You're going to hold on. So if you'll glance down that way, there's our little garden in our curve. See it? There you go. Um, I had the bright idea that I was going to put, I'll set you back down, that I was going to put tires up as a means of guarding my tomatoes from weeds. I thought about it and, and, and I put manure around the tomato plants. I did everything I knew to do. And I was thinking, oh, it's perfect. And, and they looked good. I'll be honest with you. They looked very good when they were about two and a half feet tall. Well, now that they have tomatoes on them, I can't get a ripe tomato for nothing. Because what happens, those tomatoes, they hit those tires, and the tires are hot because of the sunshine. And whammo, you get a rotten tomato that's rotten on the bottom. Uh, now, if you come by our fruit stand, I promise, I'm not selling you rotten tomatoes. But a lot of the tomatoes that we're having to throw away are beautiful tomatoes, just the bottoms are rotten. And so I go and I look at, you know, this right here at, as our church. You know, we, we can try to plan and do and, and, and chase and, and set up so many committees and thoughts and checklists and surveys and everything else. But at the end of the day, we are only the waterers and the sowers. God is the one that's going to allow our church to grow. God is the one that's going to allow me to grow. I can only do so much. I can only read the Bible so much. I can only, you know, I can try only so hard. But at the end of the day, it's what God has in store for me. And that's what allows me to grow. It will apply to our church. And I think it's one of the things I know right now we're in a kind of a turbulent time. Everybody's anxious and whatnot. But we're, it's, it's, we're, we're in the, the stages of we've just tilled the garden. We've planted the seeds. You know, we, we have done everything that we could in our ability. And now we have to trust God to make it grow. Now, I'm closing in on my 10-minute maximum that I wanted to do. And so what I wanted to do is, is let's back up. And let's do a foundation check. I want you to think, and, I, and I'll, I want you to seriously think about, you know, what is your foundation? I'm, I'm thinking about mine right now. What cracks show up? Well, I don't have any cracks. They'll show up. I promise you they will. When you have a turbulent situation like we had three weeks ago when Courtney's grandmother passed away, they'll show up. I promise you they will. And it's in the least, mo least moments that you, you think that they'll show up, they'll show up. And that's, what, that's the only thing that you can go back and land, uh, land on and rebuild on is that foundation. Look at Wendell and Carol's house. If I'm not mistaken, it's sitting on a, basically the same foundation that their old one was. 
You know, it's one of those things that if your foundation is solid in Christ, is a poured foundation in Christ, you can have a turbulent situation come and destroy everything around you. But guess what you got? Your foundation. You can rebuild it relatively easy. And so as, as we go through this week, as we approach Sunday, as we approach, you know, kids going back to school, we're facing this whole COVID situation. Go back to the basics. Get back to your foundation. Get back to what Christ talks about in the Beatitudes. Get back to what Paul talks about in Hebrews. Get back to what, you know, David went through in the Old Testament. Go back and look at, look at how <clears throat> Joseph, how he chased God no matter what. Go back and look at those stories that we all clung to in Bible school and that we all clung to when we were young. They still have value. They still have boo koodles of value. And lastly, I'd like to close with this. I wrote it down, so I'm going to read it verbatim. <clears throat> Jealousy and strife were still among those people in Corinth. Thus, their foundations were not Christ-centered, but instead flesh-centered. So is our foundational cornerstone Christ-centered, or is it held together by the instability of human emotion? That's what you got to look at. I love to go back, and I know, I know uh, Pat talked about his dad, and it got to me Sunday. You know, I love the song, Christ is Solid Rock. Uh, we'll sing it. I can sing it. I'm not going to sing it right now, but I'm just saying I'll sing it. And sometimes I think I just let the words come out of my mouth, not pay no attention to them. So as we, as you know, I say bye on this Wednesday evening, I want you to remember that Christ saw the rock. On him I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Remember that as you walk through this week and going into Sunday. Let's pray right quick, and uh, y'all have a good evening. Father God, thank you for the ability to have your word right in front of our faces. Thank you for uh, having a place where we can talk and having a, the ability with technology and everything else to be able to spread your word through all ends of the earth. Lord, help us to look at our own foundations and determine if, if as we built them, were they square, were they right. And if they weren't, Lord, you be the mason to fix them. Tear our, tear our foundations down by any means necessary to where you can build back the one that needs to be there. Lord, thank you so much for allowing Jesus to be the ultimate mason in our lives. Help him to be the, help him to be the light that, that shows and that we chase after. Lord, and I thank you for everything that you've done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Y'all have a great week. I appreciate you turn, tuning in. I hope it wasn't too long-winded. Uh, I tend to talk fast, but I'm excited. And this was a passage that I was really, really excited about. So once again, I appreciate it. Uh, love all y'all, and have a great evening.